Ahoy, uh, my email is uh, Lukasz Porul, and yes, I'll be talking about brand reputation, tracking using multiple social networking platforms, as Indra already said. Uh, together with my colleagues, I came from beautiful country of Ireland. If you have never been there, I do recommend. Uh, it's a bit rainy, but once you find this moment where the sunshine is there, it's pretty amazing. I probably Jindri can, can confirm. And uh, yeah, so this is our second visit to Prague, and I'm really glad that we had this opportunity to present here. And uh, during our first visit, we had the pleasure to meet this guy on the street. I was nasty enough to take a picture of him. <laughs> uh, and I was looking for a good reason to put it in the presentation, but I didn't find any. So uh, yeah, I'm talking about now what I'm supposed to do. Uh, so brand reputation. Uh, there is a lot of companies out there, corporations, uh, with their brands and franchises. So all these companies, corporations, they're very interested in to know what's the people's opinion about their brand, uh, whether they have a good name or bad name, whether they are going up with the opinions or down. And uh, why is that? Well, it's very simple for these guys because that translates directly for benefit, for money. So the better the image, the better for the company. And as we all know, these giants like Apple or Google, they're so well established that uh, they might lift the price for their products and it's still fine because everybody appreciates the brand and the quality that's supposed to go uh, after this brand. So a uh, short definition about reputation management. It's a Wikipedia definition, so it says that it's uh, understanding or uh, influ influencing of an individual's or business reputation. Uh, in this presentation, I focus mainly on the understanding because what we want to say is we would like to say how to monitor social media. So we're not really trying to influence individuals. Although and later in the talk, you will see that there, there is some shaping uh, in this regard. So first of all, why social media? Why if we talk about uh, brand reputation, we go to social media? Uh, and it's a very good question, but uh, the answer is very simple. So everybody is there. That's the place where everybody resides. And uh, I don't know if you know numbers, but uh, the total number of people who ever entered internet is around 2 billion. And we have 1.2 billion people using social media. So uh, active users. So that means that means that's, uh, and it's a, it's a growing tendency. So that means pretty much everybody who is active, who is a businessman, uh, who is academic, whatever, they are there. Because this is a matter of survival these days. And few charts just to support my statements. So you can see there is a growing trend there. So we have total internet and then we have social networking. And we can see that the numbers actually converge and they're getting close. I mean, of course, there's more and more people active on the internet, but so is social networking growing and it's keep growing. And everybody fe felt like, okay, it's the market is satisfied. There is nothing to add. Facebook has everything, Twitter has everything, but every so often we have these new startups I don't know, Instagram or anything and pops up and suddenly somebody earns billion out of it. Uh, on the other hand, we have uh, in general uh, time spent online for internet categories and we can see again that social networking is really leading here and uh, over here we have hours per month and billions. So you can see that reaches almost 35 billion hours per month, which is quite a lot because that means I probably around 17 hours per on per person, something like this. So it's quite a lot. Uh, here we have some tools that are already there. Actually, I selected few. There is thousands of tools that are already there for uh, brand reputation management. Uh, these are usually tools to track social media. And it doesn't need necessarily to be brand reputation. It can be any topic, although very often they are used for this particular purpose because that's of interest for most of the companies. And uh, what's common for these solutions? Well, first of all, I would say easily 70% of this is based on Twitter because Twitter is so easy to mine. It's public and uh, we have mechanisms like hashtags to, to extract the information. Uh, some of them try to go a bit further and they do uh, try to mine Facebook, which is much harder because even though the common opinion is Facebook has no any authentication mechanisms or privacy, there is a lot of this there and it's really hard to get information out of Facebook. Uh, here I have one small example from the top one mentioned on the list, uh, social mention. And I have two examples. So I was looking for BMW and Mercedes and see 
like what's the opinion about these brands, if you can say so. And surprisingly, <laughs> like and we can see that the sentiment is much better for instance for Mercedes than for BMW. I was surprised uh, that what it means here, like for instance, 86 to one means that there is 86 more positive sentiment than negative about Mercedes, while BMW is not so good. Also passion, I mean, there's people are very passionate about these brands. So if you buy Mercedes, it's like with Apple, when you buy Mac, you never go back or something like this. And then you have strength and re reach. Strength is actually quite interesting factor because for instance, what this tool does is actually look at user and how strong is the user, how, how influential it is. So this actually shows how many out of all the users talking about these brands are actually influential. So from here, 17% uh, of users are influential, which is very good for the company because they do want to address influential users. And on the other hand, we have just general reach. So they reach uh, around 20%, so which is still very good. I mean. So this is just one example how the potential report can you look like. And uh, this, this particular tool, social mention, I think it's just using Twitter. I don't think it uses any other network. Nevertheless, other, other tools try to approach uh, many networks at the same time, but there is a lot of challenges there, and we'll be talking about the challenges soon. So, uh, first of all, <laughs> this is like we call it a social media landscape, so you can see a lot of these social media services. And first, what you can see is actually the diversity. So, there are differences, differences in API, in architecture, design, uh, at many levels. And there is no easy way to, to interact with all of these at the same time. There are some tools to actually uh, help us maybe to participate, to write posts and so on, but actually to mine them all together, it's still a challenge. And this is the famous picture, right? The, 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 the social media or data silos. Uh, so these platforms are somehow isolated, but yeah, if, I if I'm a company, I would like to have a look at all these users, 1.2 billion, not, I don't know, 60 million here or 1 million here, I want to see the, the big picture, especially if you talk about multinationals. So uh, what are the challenges? So there's many different sources. Yeah, that's the as easy as this. Different data exchange formats. So they use very different APIs, different technologies. They can use XML, JSON, whatever. I mean, there is a lot of solutions out there. Uh, there is large volume of real-time data with noise. So yeah, data, I mean, information overload. That's a common issue and uh, it hasn't been solved yet, <laughs> at least in this domain, and multilingual contact. So yeah, there can be multiple services in different languages and still how to combine, for instance, opinion about Mercedes in Germany and in UK, that's still not a very easy task to do. So what we say, yes, yeah, semantic web. And this is not because we are really passionate about it, but we really believe that it can work in this particular domain. And there is a number of reasons for this. So uh, first of all, uh, semantic web, yeah, RDF, uh, is machine readable, can be linked with other data, flexible access, structure query, portable supports reasoning. So till now, I think most of you are already familiar with RDF and semantic web after all these presentations and workshops yesterday. So I don't need to convince you about these things, but maybe just to mention, so the, the data consolidation, this is the, the key point. Yeah, so actually now we have a tool that help us to consolidate this data from this silos and, uh, and it's machine re readable. And yeah, we can link the information. So we can exp expand actually our knowledge base, which is not that trivial and it's not available in current solutions. Uh, what we use in Semantic Web, so we use ontologies to describe the world. These are the models for our world. And there are domain ontologies, uh, many ontologies for different purposes. In, uh, in our project, which is the base for this presentation, uh, we use Shock, which is semanti inter semantically interact, uh, interli interlinked online communities, which is developed in Derry. And it's one of the uh, most popular ontologies now to describe social media content, like forums, blogs, and so on and so forth. And uh, the, the, the universal deployment of it is a strong side of it. Uh, so what we want to do is thanks to this ontology and semantic web, you would like to expand, as I mentioned, the knowledge base using Think Open Data Cloud, this picture by uh, Richard. I think she should start to charge for it because everybody shows it, and, but it's really beautiful. Uh, <laughs> and so that shows the power of semantic web. So yeah, so we can enrich this information wherever it is and link it all together. And so what the, our project implements social media linked data space paradigm and uh, 
So yeah, the basic idea is yeah, we, we hold the social media content from different sources. We transfer everything to RDF, so we create a graph and we yeah, we enrich the information with whatever data hubs are already there and might be related. This is the very basic uh, flow, I would say, inside the system. So we have some of the social media. We have Facebook, we have Twitter. Quite interesting Best Buy. I don't know if you ever tried to see their data sets because they do expose uh, data and actually it's RDF, so, this, so it's, it's, really, it's really useful. And so we extract the data, then we convert it, I would say, uh, to link data, and then we perform some analysis and try to have a reasonable, concise reports for business, so it can be used as a business uh, decision support system. Slightly more in, de in detail, uh, so there is two paradigms here, so there is implicit invocation pattern and the blackboard pattern. To make it very simple, uh, implicit invocation pattern is an uh, event based system and black box pattern means that we have a common knowledge space and there is many contributors. In this case, we have many social media sources. They contribute something on this blackboard collaboratively and every so often we can get the whole picture out of the blackboard, which is like collaboratively created. And uh, on the very bottom side, a bit technical. I hope it's not too technical. So we have data crawlers. So yeah, first of all, we need to mine this social media, wherever the, whatever the nature of them is. Then we perform entity recognition as the first step. So for that purpose, you can use uh, yeah, Freebase or DBpedia Spotlight. There is a lot of solutions available now that you can uh, use for entity recognition. Then we perform interlinking. And yeah, at the last step, as it was shown on this flow diagram, we perform analysis and we try to make sense of all of it. On top of this, we have controller publishing framework, triple store, which is crucial because we need to store our uh, knowledge graph somewhere. And on top of that, we have some applications. So this is the front end for the user. And this is completely other thing. This is more about psychology, I would say, how to have an attractive uh, interface to present all these things. Uh, this is uh, architecture. Uh, I won't focus too much here because uh, yeah, it's too technical, but anyway, what I can say is like you can see the same elements here. So you have the semantic model there, you have the event manager. If you remember, I said the whole system is event driven. And uh, yeah, you have social media pipeline. And what's interesting here, separately, there is reviews pipeline like from Best Buy. We can also look at the reviews and uh, yeah, see, combine it with other information. So uh, technology choice, uh, why we did it? So one format representation, yeah, RDF. We, we believe this is the way to go. There is one format, uh, one method for access the data. So there is SparkQL endpoint, so you can query the graph. So we, we create this big knowledge graph out of all social media sources. And then, yeah, we, I would say provide standard way to access the knowledge graph, SparkQL and endpoint. And you can use other tool to access the knowledge uh, the knowledge uh, graph. Linked, uh, linked to existing information hubs, so this is again about expanding the information, and enriching the information in a semantic way. Uh, it's simple, easy to scale, uh, components can be distributed, uh, so yeah, a bunch of design uh, principles, uh, but anyway, we try to make it as flexible as possible, so it's very modular, and we can easily add new social media uh, wrappers, I would say, uh, because as we know, this cloud of social media is growing very fast and we would like to have it uh, as complete as possible. So that's also drives the, in the, the infrastructure. Uh, what it could be potentially used for, so guiding decision-making process, that's quite straightforward. Sensing and tracking public sentiments on products and services, this is our aim. So as easy as this, monitoring quality of services to improve quality of services. So. Yeah, if you have very negative uh, opinions, like very recently Xbox uh, got uh, really a lot of critique regarding their new Xbox One, and they learned. So they actually apl applied a lot of changes. Uh, it was We could also observe similar situation with Windows 8. They did apply some changes. So it's not like this monolithic internationals will just, uh, I would say, hold to whatever they created, but you can see that there's more and more dialogue and there'll be more influence uh, in this regard. Exploring different views regarding projects and services. So yeah, people can have multiple points of view. Maybe they were not considered for some reason during the design uh, stage and still can be captured on some stage. And of course, analytics. And uh, uh, I think I'm 
finishing slowly, maybe too fast. Uh, this work has been carried under, yeah, linked to the to media project. If you have any questions now, I'm very happy to answer. Uh, other than that, this is QR code to my LinkedIn profile, and I'm really happy to answer uh, later. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lukas, for the presentation. Are there any questions? No, any questions? <laughs> Hans has one. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so you talked about Twitter, but what about Facebook and the others? You talked about these walls. How eager uh, are they to share data? Can you say something about that? So as I said, with Facebook, it's a, it is a bit of an issue uh, because it's all driven by. Uh, uh, yeah, the privileges you have. So, like you, by default, you have access only to the public stream, which is usually not very rich. Uh, so, if you want to have more detailed analysis, you have to have a way to invite users to participate. Otherwise, it's quite tough. That's why I said like Twitter or other platforms are much easier to browse. Nevertheless, we cannot do anything about the privacy uh, policy of Facebook. Yeah, we, we can't hack Facebook. So, yeah, it's uh, completely driven by the. Uh, case basis policy uh, that's applied on the platform, we can't go beyond it. But uh, still, it's not our concern. We just try to consolidate everything, I would say, at the technical level. So as soon as there will be better policies there, yeah, <laughs> we can fetch the data. Any other questions? Uh, what is the validity of, uh, for example, uh, sentiment uh, analysis, uh, you cannot recognize uh, irony or something like that. It's, uh, do you have some control of the uh, validity of the mm -hmm. analysis? So, of course, it depends on the sentiment analysis algorithms. I would say the best ones, they say they are around 80% accurate and, and that's supported by evidence. So, I believe that at, at this stage, the, the automatic or semi-automatic methodologies are sufficient enough these days to actually provide us with sentiment analysis. Of course, there is sarcasm, uh, but what you can learn actually studying the data is that, first of all, as I mentioned, uh, the most important are seed users. When you identify seed users, these guys tend to be quite constructive. There is like, I don't know, but there's this tendency in the data that when you have seed users, they are very constructive and they are very straightforward. Maybe I'm exaggerating here, but in this way, uh, it seems like this, uh, at least based on research till now, we can still achieve around 80% accuracy, which is uh, fair enough, considering the amount of data, because otherwise you would need thousands of people to go through, and this way you can keep it completely automatic. Okay, do we have any other questions? Can't uh, this uh, identifying uh, like uh, important brand defenders uh, be exploited by the users because they could pretend they will uh, they are brand uh, like they are fan of the brand and. Uh, they can uh, they can pretend this and uh, then uh, use it for some uh, they own uh, like uh, okay i understand your question although in this case uh okay this company tries to get to know themselves rather than actually trying to use it for marketing so i don't think they would sabotage their own work you know uh, putting their own people tweeting something nice, and it might work if they want to influence the general public. So in this sense, I would say it might happen, but it's actually beneficial because that would lead to the better name of the brand and then they can observe it. So even if it exists, it's actually fine because this way they can build up. I mean, nobody says whether it's fair or, or not, but that influences the market and then generates money. So, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's completely fine. And yeah, they do not sabotage themselves. <laughs> okay, thank you.